Hello everybody, it's Vinyl Rich here with Vinyl Tag 2018. There was one of these that went around in 2017. I did not participate. I thought I would this time. Uh, I think a James Griffiths, Jeff Party, and a Sean, I can't remember. I think it was Jeff Party's friend. I think they're the ones that came up with these 20 questions. Um, I only have 19 of them down. I'm missing one, but oh well. First question is uh, the first VC video you remember watching. And uh, it was about four and a half years ago. My brother was telling me about the VC. It was in the summer of whatever year. He was telling me, oh man, this one dude on, the, on YouTube, he has this great record collection. You got to check it out. And it was Derek Higgins. So I remember I looked it up after I got off the phone with my brother and I watched like a couple of minutes. I didn't watch less than five minutes of it and I go, this is stupid. And this guy's showing his records, you know. A year later, um, went by and I asked my brother, hey, what was that thing on YouTube? You know, the what did, what did they call it? And he goes, the vinyl community. I go, oh, okay, yeah. So that night at work, when I was on break, I typed in Vinyl Community and uh, Mike Seatown video came up and it was, he was showing his record collection and it was letter A. I was like, oh, I'll watch this, you know. So I'm watching it with my headphones on and he's showing his A's and he showed Annie. I mean, he's showing all this, you know, hard stuff and then he shows Annie. I go, okay, this is cool, you know, this kind of guy. I'll watch this. And I ended up watching. He went through his whole collection. So I would say the first video that I watched all the way through was definitely Mike Seatown. Uh, records that you were turned on to by the VC. I'm going to show a few because there are several. This is Pebbles Volume 5. I did have some Pebbles albums, but uh, it was High Octane Revival recommended this one. He did a video, uh, you know, showing his uh, comps, garage comps, and he highly recommended this one. And I bought it based on his recommendation. And I bought another one he showed. I was a teenage caveman. Really cool stuff. The next guy... I'm going to show a few. There we go. My records are falling. Um, Chris Alvear showed a 7-inch a box set of these guys. Los uh, Psychos. I thought it was Los Secos, but I, I watched a video of these guys talking, and they pronounced it Los Psychos. So. And uh, it's they're complete 7-inch uh, recordings. Six, seven inches. And, uh, yeah, he had a box set of it, but I bought the album. Cool stuff. Chris Alvear turned me on to that one. The Hogs Ear Report turned me on to this one. This is Psychedelic Moods, a mind-expanding phenomena. This is actually, I believe, the first album that used the word psychedelic in the title. It's a pretty good album. This is a three-record set, and uh, really cool. The next one, a uh, couple of records here that uh, I wouldn't have bought if it wasn't for the Metal the Theologian. This is Creator, Endless Pain. I don't know, 1985, maybe their first. Heavy Metal. And then I got this one here, Creator, Flag of Hate. Uh, this is an EP, and I believe this might be their third release. This is a U.S. version. I think the... Import version only had the songs on site A. The US one added these three songs and they just put a sticker over the the song listings. And then I got this one here, Route 666 from Reverb Motherfuckers. Uh Dead Wax 66 turned me onto this album. Uh he's turned me onto a lot of music. So I mean I'm not saying this is the favorite, but I really dig this album. It is crazy. And I really enjoy this record. It's, I think it's partially live, partially studio. It sounds like 
the butthole surfers in their heyday. Really cool. And then one last one I'm going to show is Smart Dad's Bummer Summer. Um, get into it with Jason Hook. Your, I'm your host, Jason Hook. He's got the, the I, that's one of the best openings, I think, for these VC videos. But yeah, he turned me on to this band. And the, the label, Radio Rahim. And a uh, cool mustache. Punk band with a mustache. All right. Hobbies. I don't really have a lot of hobbies anymore. I mean, I used to collect stamps when I was little. Maybe that's why I collect records now. They're kind of like looking at big stamps. Um, I do like movies. I don't watch movies as much as I used to. I'm watching You Idiots on YouTube now more than... <laughs> more than I should. Um, I like art. I enjoy going to art museums. My wife really doesn't, so I don't go as often as I would like. But uh, I don't know. I used to draw, paint. I don't know if I thought of it as a hobby, but that's something that I, I should do. I also took photography in class, uh, college, but... When did you start collecting is the next question. I never really considered myself a collector. Um, I remember back in the 70s, I used to like to be the guy that, you know, people came up, oh, check this al album out. And I, I always liked that, you know, even in college. And then, you know, in, in the 80s, I was buying punk records. And then uh, that one album came out, uh, was it Poison Idea? God dang it. Well, anyways, the album is uh, Record Collectors or Potent pretentious assholes <laughs> I, it, it, I, I should have bought the record I was looking at it and that's when it clicked I'm a record collector you know that's when it, it finally clicked on me I was a record collector long before then but I never considered myself one do you play an instrument no not really I played clarinet really badly when I was a little kid were you in a band? No, I was never really in a band. I did perform with a with some guys three times. I did write some songs. Nuke the Whales was one. Uh, what was the other ones? I can't really say. They're not PC correct. Um, oh, what was that? I had another one about... Uh, I was born in the... I was born in 59, the year that James Dean died. It was a song about me being the reincarnation of James Dean. But anyways, uh, I sang vocals at a couple of... It wasn't really concert gigs. It was a... When was it? A, a little bar. And a couple of times we played at the studio somewhere in the valley. And there were other bands. And... Uh, we sang, uh, or I sang covers. I did a uh, essay Saturday Night by uh, Bay City Rollers. I sang uh, She Was Just 17 by The Beatles. Mixed in with like three or four of my original songs. And the band, they would just uh, jam. And then we would break into the song and... Uh, our intention was just to try to get people pissed off at us. And I ended up getting even getting a black guy at one of those shows. So I'm got, I mean, some people jumped up on stage and one dude actually punched me in the eye. But uh, I was never in a band, though. And uh, I didn't really have a desire to. I Back in the 80s, when I was going to all these punk shows, I had a good job in the aerospace industry. And I knew damn well that... You know, giving up my job and touring with some band or whatever. There was no way I was going to make the money that I was making at work. And pff, I had a kid, you know, there's no way. Um, did I ever work in a record store? No. Uh, the favorite album, You Were Born. I don't own any albums the year I was born. But if I had to pick a favorite, it would have to be Elvis Presley's debut album. I do have this one here. Elvis Presley. 20 golden hits. And even though he's dressed like his 70s, it is all his 50s stuff on the back. 
this is like a budget album. And I, I do have this other Elvis one I want to show. Elvis at Stax. Um, I wasn't really into buying uh, vinyl when I bought this. I was still buying CDs more than vinyl. I would like to have this on vinyl, but since I have it on CD, I, I mean, there's no sense in it. But this is really cool. The R&B and country sessions, the outtakes, really cool disc. But yeah, that's a cool disc. Um, classic album I've never heard. There's a lot of them. Especially from the 70s. I've never really listened to a lot of those bands, all the, you know, the whole albums all the way through. But let's pick a real big band, and that would be Pink Floyd. I think the last album I actually listened to all the way, you know, sat and listened to the record. and It was at a friend's house, uh, Wish You Were Here. So I've never listened to The Wall all the way through. So That's a classic album I've never heard. Guilty Pleasure. I mean, come on. I just showed my Village People albums and these What the Fuck videos. But uh, I'll show something. Got the Partridge Family, the shopping bag. It's a free shopping bag inside. I don't think it, I have the shopping bag, but let's see what this. I always thought she was really cute. Yeah, that's when I realized I like brunettes. But yeah, but this is just kind of a goofball record. You know, I don't really consider it a guilty pleasure. So I pulled this one out, and it's the Red Hot Chili Peppers, the Abbey Road EP. And the reason I, this is a guilty pleasure for me, because I can't stand this fucking band. But uh, these are pretty cool, pretty cool, uh, very early songs, produced by George Clinton, I believe. Yeah. Pretty cool. But yeah, I'm not a Red Hot Chili Peppers fan at all. Um, the strangest record I own? I don't know, man. I got so many kind of strange records. I mean, that Reverb Motherfuckers one is pretty strange. The Butthole Surfers. But I picked this one, you know. Something a little different. Lord Buckley. It's Buckley's best. It's, he's a pretty eccentric dude. Pretty weird guy. Um, Picture Disc. I don't own a lot of Picture Discs. They come in these plastic, which I've heard damages the records so i i keep them in these uh disc keeper sleeves and this is let me see if i can it's christian death the iron mask and this is the back side and it actually sounds pretty good it's number 593 out of 1500 but uh yeah when I bought this, I saw they had this, and they had the regular version, and they were both the same price, so I picked the picture disc up. I wish I would have gotten both, but whatever. It actually does sound pretty good, though. Um, best, uh, where am I at? Best posthumous release? I don't really know, so I just picked this one up. It's the first uh, Jimi Hendrix album. It was released after his uh, death. Um, and Impulse Buy, I don't really know what that is. But I, I guess this would fit the bill. This is an Impulse Buy. It's a Generation Suicida. It's a band, an L.A. band. Um, and it's on Going Underground Records. I was in the... Going Underground Records is a record store in Bakersfield. I was in that store when I saw this record, and I actually kept the sticker on. I usually take the stickers off with Goo Gone, but uh, I kept the sticker on. I thought, you know, a Going Underground Records with a Going Underground sticker on is pretty cool. But that's it was a total impulse buy. I had I had no idea what this sounded like. It's it sounds like a melodic '80s punk. Um. Best blind buy? I don't know. I mean, I, I a lot. I have a lot of blind buys. I'm gonna show one band here though. And actually, the blind buy was a, a seven inch single. I bought a couple of them. It was at the Lakewood Mall, and this guy had like he did 
like in the you know the walkway of the mall the this guy had like this little table set up and he had like CDs for sale and he had you know some seven inches and there was a couple of uh, Sisters of Mercy seven inches and I'd never heard of them I don't think they had been out that long and I bought those but I didn't want to show seven inches so I'm going to show my 12 inches of the Sisters of Mercy and I don't know how well these are going to show up really cool album covers though this is the one that has Alice, Floor Show, Phantom, and 1969. This still might be my favorite by them. And then we got this one here, the Reptile EP. Is it the Reptile House EP? Really cool stuff. I don't know. <laughs> this is uh, Body and Soul with Body Electric, Train, and After Hours. But yeah, really cool goth band. And then this is the last one I'm going to show. It's a Temple of Love extended version with Heartland and Give Me Shelter, Rolling Stones cover. But yeah, that's Sisters of Mercy. All right. I do have a paper on this one. I, I usually don't like to use notes, but... Okay. A blind spot artist... Now, the way I believe they describe this is it's an artist that it's a blind spot in your uh, collection. You don't have any of their albums. And for me, that would be the Kinks. I absolutely own no Kinks on vinyl. I do own a number of their CDs. Their early albums are, I mean, I, I like the early albums, but I like the... Uh, that mid, late 60s is the best. Up until Lola. I think Lola is the last CD I have of theirs. But yeah, that's the Blind Spot Artist would be the Kinks. My favorite album cover. I was going to show this with another one, but I'm going to show uh, Sgt. Pepper's. I did a video of my favorite album covers. And uh, I'm going to say this is my favorite album cover. I was going to show it with the Rolling Stones. But... uh whatever okay musicians I've met I haven't really met a lot of really big name musicians I've never been like a hero worship kind of guy um, I have met Henry Rollins Chuck Bukowski at Okie Dogs but I didn't really have much of a conversation with them uh, Henry was trying to get look like chili cheese fries some chick to buy chili cheese fries from him Chuck was trying to pick up on this girl that I was, you know, we were with. And uh, she said, man, he had, after, after they left, man, he had B.O. Um, but uh, I met this guitar player, Asian dude. I don't know, his, I, don't, I should have looked at it. I don't remember his name. He was from uh, Legal Weapon. I believe that was the band. I, see, I, I, I'm not really prepared for this. But I went outside. To get some fresh air at Al's bar. And uh, he was out there smoking. And we, we struck up a conversation. And we, we talked probably 10, 15 minutes. And <laughs> as we're talking, this guy, man, like, just down the street, you know, was, you know, beating up his girlfriend, you know. Or, you know, he was slapping her around and whatever. And I, I told the guy, you know, man, I don't need to stand here and watch that, you know. So I went over there. Broke it up, and then he swang at me, and I swang at him. And then next thing I know, man, she just jumps on my back, and now I'm fighting both of them, you know. But uh, yeah, I I wish I knew the guy's name. So I'm gonna name somebody that I I do remember their name, and it's Pat Smear. I've talked to him a few times, um, but one the, the time I talked to him the most was at uh, the Anti Club. He was sitting at the bar. And we were there to see Pierre Yubu, or however you pronounce that band. I believe that was the band that was playing that night. And I went up and I bought him a beer and talked. And I remember asking him, I go, when are you going to do something new? You know? He goes, well, uh, don't you think I've already done enough? And I'm going, yeah, I guess so, you know. And uh, I mean, maybe six years later or whatever, he was in Nirvana. Maybe longer than that. Anyways, 
Pet smear. I did see David Bowie driving down the Hollywood freeway once, though. Um, and I've met other people, but no big deal. Um, sentimental album. Uh, this guy here with this toxic masculinity. I don't have no sentimental albums. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, an album no one knows. I, I don't know. But I, I picked this one. Ku Klux Frankenstein. I don't even think they have anything on YouTube. So I don't think many people know this band. They may. I mean, I don't even remember where they're from. It's a pretty cool record, though. But another band that, I mean, I'm sure some people do know, but I don't think a lot of people do, is The Human Hands. This is a 12-inch with the song Jubilee. I know that song Jubilee is on YouTube. And then these two are on the B-side. Human Hands, really cool band. Um, Dennis Duck's in it, Rick Potts, Juan Gomez, Bill Noland, Dave Wiley. Really cool musicians. And this is an album of theirs. It has Trains and Planes. That's a song that's probably on YouTube. It's also got Jubilee on it. This is a gatefold. But yeah, really cool. Kind of arty band. And I got one other album by them that, uh, this is the, these recordings exist as virtually complete documentation of a band that deserved more recognition than it ever received. And this is on that, uh, Independent Project Records. Really cool record label. If you ever see anything on Independent Project Records, I can almost guarantee that it's going to be good. But yeah, this Probably has just about everything they ever recorded on it. Recorded, I mean. A lot of, mostly demos and stuff, probably. And uh, that's it. 19 questions. There's one I missed, but uh, I don't know which one it is. Take care, guys and gals. I hope that was entertaining. Baba Booey.